Uh, well, my name is Griffin. I moved to South Africa about eight years ago. I was a journalist up to now. So I spent about 14 years doing international news. I traveled all over the world. Uh, I was in Bangkok before I came to Johannesburg. Uh, so my partner is Thai and we have two small boys who are 6 and 11. So we spent a lot of time going to soccer matches and doing after school programs and all those sorts of things. Um, so it started off as just a, an experiment I did as part of my, my research at WITS. I was working on a PhD project, which is still ongoing, um, to see if there were different ways of getting books from South African publishers into the hands of readers without going the usual route through like a typical bookstore that you would find like in a shopping mall or in a, a you know, because I found it so hard to find the South African books that were written for young adults. I had to order a lot of them from overseas. And so I went around as part of my research, speaking with publishers and speaking with authors, and uh, looking around at different places where people can buy books. And so I ended up taking some books around in a backpack, and then eventually I grew into a suitcase, uh, taking books that had been kind of left over, essentially. They call them remainders. You know, so it was books that had had a life, had been sold already, but then there were still some copies left over that often just get recycled. So I was taking those books and offering them at really cheap prices, really, too. And books that were donated by one of the publishers, by Jacana, and went around Park Station to see who would be interested in buying books that were new books from publishers, from local publishers. And slowly that grew over many months from 20 books in the backpack into the store that we're in now. Bridge Books is very new. We just opened in June. The name is inspired by the Nelson Mandela Bridge uh, because we use that in our logo and because I spent a lot of time crossing the bridge when I was coming into town to deliver books. Um, but there's also a metaphorical bridge, which is equally important, about trying to bridge the gap between mainstream publishing and the way that books have been distributed in the past and reaching the large numbers of South African readers who can be left out of that system just because the books aren't being distributed in a way that reaches large populations of people who are, for example, taking a train. And they brought me into this building, which used to be the Barclays Bank. It was built in the 1940s as Barclays. It's a huge space. It's far too big for one person. It's hard to get a sense of it until you actually walk in here because it's so enormous. So basically we do books four different ways here. We have new books, we have used books. We do a retail trade for people who are regular book buyers off the street. We do a wholesale trade for people who have a bookstore somewhere else. And those people who have bookstores in other parts of the city are actually trading books all over the region because some of them are taking books to, for example, into Tembisa or into Pretoria or into Spring. But some of them are going even farther afield because you have people who are ordering books from like Lilongwe or Lusaka or places where a vendor is buying books, loading them onto a bus and then shipping them all across the subregion to wherever you can get by road in Southern Africa. So we have really lots of different kinds of people that we're dealing with every day, which is part of what I enjoy, is we're working in lots of different ways, trying to experiment with lots of different things. And we've been lucky because most of the publishers have been super supportive and helped a lot, because otherwise it wouldn't have been possible without some support from industry to get books into our hands that we then pass along in lots of different ways. Yes, I think especially when you're in a, um, a location like this where you're dealing with so many different kinds of people from lots of different walks of life, it's really important to find ways to engage with people on lots of different levels. And so one of the ways we do that is just by pricing our books very widely. So we get secondhand books that can often be donated that will price at like 20 Rand so that anyone can come into the store and you do find a book that you can buy. We also have a, a pay it forward wall that we've started with donations from big companies like Subsolar, which is a solar energy company, and from individuals who just write in and want to help people get books. So they'll buy a book or even part of a book and just write it down on a slip of paper, or tape it to the wall. And then if someone comes in, like we have a lot of students come in who don't have enough money to buy the books for their pleasure necessarily, we can just pull a voucher off the wall and then give them the book that they're interested in. independent booksellers had a really rough time for about 10 years um, because of the, the digital revolution and the way things changed quickly. 
but that independent bookstores are have a really important place and have actually managed to adapt better than maybe some of the, the larger bookstores, certainly like in the United States. The, some of the large bookstores have really struggled and independent bookstores are still there. The main thing is to be really flexible because things are changing all the time and every day is very different, which is something that I really enjoy. I miss that from my days in journalism where you would go into work every day and really not know what the day was gonna bring necessarily. And I find that's often the case here. Like we're constantly dealing with, with new challenges and with new people and different kinds of people coming through the store. There's always new kinds of books and different ideas about books that we're trying to engage with. And we also do a lot of workshopping events. So we're trying to bring up young writers or just new writers. You don't have to be young. You can just be starting out as a writer and figuring out how to help people tell their story, but to do it in a way that will, you know, make a book that will sell, that will make a story that can be published. So that it's not just writing sort of as a pastime, it's writing to really become a writer, something that you can do and that becomes part of your career and part of your identity. Um, a very different selection because we're curating the books ourselves. So it's things that I'm interested in, that people who work here are interested in, and the things that we see people in town are interested in. So our selection is very different from what you get when you go to a bookstore in, you know, in the northern suburbs somewhere because we're catering to a very different population as well. Um, I think for independent bookstores, the main thing is, again, to, to be flexible and constantly adapting and to think about different ways of doing things. And for me, that means doing a lot of events as well. So we host a lot of writers to come in and talk. We host publishers to come in and talk about how to get published. We host workshops for writers who are either working on a novel or could just be working on a blog post. I mean, they could be learning just how to write a really, really good Twitter kind of thing. For others who want to have events here, I just suggest that you email or call to make a time to come by. Um, we'll discuss and figure out if your book is a good match for the store. Depending on what kind of book it is and who the author is, we have lots of different arrangements that we make. Uh, but all you have to do is get in touch because we have lots of different kinds of writers come through and we're happy to host people here. And some days it's different sorts of things where you're just trying to engage with people, figuring out what's going on, what people might be interested in and trying to learn about what it is that Johannesburg is and what it's becoming because I think that's part of the forward planning for the books. It's not necessarily what people want to read right now, but as we have so many young people in the city who are getting to be older and want to read their own kinds of books, what are those books going to be? And that's so fascinating, I think. So my other big project is organizing uh, the African Book Trust, which is a new nonprofit that I'm setting up and we're going to raise money to buy books that we can give away to libraries, whether that's a community library in your neighborhood or a school library. It could be a library at a community group. Any kind of library where books are publicly available and can be lent out to people we will donate books to help stock the library and try and get more current books into libraries because oftentimes libraries have a dated, very dated stock. So trying to get more current reading in, which I think will engage people more because people want to know what's happening now and want to engage with authors who are more of the moment.